So I think the first thing I need to work on is getting this uh, wideband O2 uh, installed because I'm going to need that before I uh, get the turbo installed to uh, tune the air fuel ratio properly and stuff. So I think that's going to be my first uh, project for today is getting this thing uh, installed and wired up and uh, yeah then we'll uh, start looking at the manifold and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to decide where I'm inside the truck obviously trying to decide where I should mount this uh, wideband AFR gauge. I don't really want to have a clunky bracket sitting up on the dash or anything and there's I think what I'm gonna do is I've got this uh, phone cradle mounted to my cup holder here. I think I'm gonna move that over to the other side here and put my wideband right down there. It'll be a little weird like basically mounted in my cup holder and I won't be able to close the cup holder but I think that's where I'm gonna try and mount it. So I'm gonna pull uh, pull this uh, fuse box access cover off and then this uh, panel underneath the steering wheel there's a couple screws one down there and one over there I'm gonna pull that off and then I'm gonna pull this whole bracket off and cut a hole in there to uh, mount that wide band and then we'll run the wires and uh, yeah, some of them will have to go under the hood, obviously, to go to the sensor. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so I've got that uh, cup holder out of my truck. And it looks like it'll fit right about there. I'll have to try and keep it as high and to the outside as possible. And I've got a hole saw here that is about the right. I might have to file out a little bit on that hole, but... Uh, so that's my next step is to uh, knock a hole right there for this wide band O2. So I'm going to attempt to hole saw this hole in there. We'll we'll see how it goes. Didn't break the bit yet, so that's a good sign. that up a little bit so I got that hole filed out and that wide band gauge fits in there nicely so uh, I'll get that I'll hook the wire connectors up to the back of it and then get it bolted back up underneath the dash so this is the wiring harness for the power and ground and the 0 to 5 volt out and the serial communication out and it just plugs in right there. Right there. And then this one is the harness for the, uh, the O2 sensor itself. So I got that cup holder mounted back in the truck with the wide band mounted in it. And I just ran the wires down underneath and I've got them coming out right here for now. And then I'll have to run them uh, through the firewall or to the fuse box. I still got to figure out exactly where I'm going to get power and ground from. And then the, the serial, um, I'm going to try connect HP tuners up through the serial communication. So that'll have to stay in the cab here somewhere. So, but it fits and it, uh, doesn't look too bad right there. So I've got the power and the ground and the analog and communication wire ran over to the fuse box here. Now I'm gonna work on getting the wire for the O2 sensor through the firewall. 
So I think what I'm going to do is there's this big wiring harness that goes through a big rubber grommet. Uh, it's just inside the driver's side fender. And, uh, lighting's not very good here, but I think what I'm going to do is cut, basically put a slit in that grommet and try and run the sensor, uh, the cable for the uh, O2 sensor through the firewall, um, right through that grommet where the main wiring harness goes through. So I had a change of plans here. I kind of cheated a bit. Um, you can see I, there's a slit right there. I did try to make a slit through that big rubber grommet I was talking about, but I had a heck of a time. I couldn't fish the wire through there. There's like another rubber grommet on the inside and I couldn't get it through there. So I kind of cheated and I'm just trying, I popped this little grommet out for the hood latch cable and I ran the O2 sensor cable through there. So um, there's no grommet or anything around it, but it does have this jacket around it. So I'm pretty sure it'll, uh, and I'll just keep an eye on it from time to time and make sure the wire isn't rubbing through or anything. So that's how I got my uh, O2 sensor cable through the firewall. So in the fuse box here, I'll get a proper connector for this at some point, but I've just got the wire stabbed in with that fuse right there. And then the ground, I've got a butt splice to extend the wire, and then a piece of black wire just coming around. And I got just got it zip screwed to some metal that'll be grounded to the truck. Um, if that causes issues, I may have to take ground right to the battery, but we'll try that for now. And grab the keys here. So that particular fuse that I picked is switched power. So if I turn on the key, my uh, wideband comes on. So now I have to uh, get underneath the truck and um, actually install the the O2 sensor and run the harness down to it. Okay, so I've got this wire uh, for the O2 sensor ran through the firewall and this is the actual O2 sensor that will uh, plug into here. And when I've got my manifold done and the hot side all done, this bung will uh, go in the manifold there somewhere. I'll, I guess I'll have to cut a hole for it, which I guess would technically be called a bung hole since it's a hole for the bung. <laughs> but anyways, for now, uh, I'm just going to crawl under the truck and uh, pull out one of the existing the narrow band O2 and hopefully it's got the same thread and I can just thread this in where I pull that one out and uh, see if this wide band works. Okay, I'm under underneath the truck now and that is the uh, factory narrow band O2 sensor that I'm going to attempt to pull out. Hopefully, uh, it looks pretty crusty. Hopefully I can get it broken loose here. And then this is the uh, connector for that factory narrow band O2. It's just on uh, one of the cross members underneath the truck here. So I'm gonna disconnect that connector and then try and uh, thread out this factory O2 sensor. Okay, so there's that factory uh, O2 sensor on the left. And there's the AEM one, the, the wideband one that I'm going to install on the right. So looks like the threads are the same. So I'm going to thread that fact or the uh, new wideband one in and uh, hook it up and see if we can get a reading. So I got that new wideband threaded in and I'm just going to have to zip tie this cable up out of the way so it's not going to get in contact with the exhaust. But... New sensors installed. I didn't put it in too tight because it's going to be coming out soon when I do the hot side for the turbo piping anyways. So uh, we'll go up top and uh, connect it to the uh, wiring harness. So I've fed that uh, wiring harness for the wideband down. It's underneath the master cylinder kind of laying on the brake lines on the frame rail there. And you can see the 
connector from the sensor laying there too. I just got to crawl back under the truck. I can't reach that connection from here and, and plug that in. Okay, so this is the sensor cable coming through the firewall. I've just got the slack coiled up and zip tied to a brake line off the master cylinder. And then you can see right down there is the connector where it connects to the wideband O2 sensor. And again, I have it zip tied to the brake line here to keep it away from the steering shaft and away from the exhaust down there. So there is the finished product for this wideband gauge. Um, got the interior back together, got my phone cradle remounted on the other side, uh, got everything wired up, got that sensor uh, plugged in, so let's start it up and we'll uh, see what happens here. Reading 14.7, I imagine. Oh, yeah, now it's starting to change. Okay, so I've got the truck out of the shop and on the road now, so I'm just gonna do a, a, a pull here and uh, make sure um, I'm expecting it to read 12 ish AFR at wide open throttle. So here goes. It's a little icy. So yeah, I've got the wideband installed and wired and it looks like it's working the way it should. So the next step is going to be um, hooking up that communications, that serial communications wire. And uh, I'd like to see if I can get it uh, communicating with HP tuners. That way I can log AFR and uh, be ready for boost. But I think I will make that a separate video, so I will wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys next time.